Okay, everyone, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about the concept of shunt because it has come up a few times in class and there have been a bunch of questions about it. And so the definition of shunt is simply the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And this can happen both inside the lungs and outside of the lungs. So recall that the lungs get their blood supply from the heart. And while we think about the heart as uh, having only one chamber, in reality, it has four chambers and two completely separate sides. And uh, what happens is that the right heart, uh, the right side of the heart pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary artery, which is shown here in blue. And uh, let's say that the partial pressure of oxygen in the venous blood is about 40. Then the blood is oxygenated by the lungs, as we've learned, and it flows to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins, uh, where is then sent out uh, throughout the rest of the body. And here's the pulmonary veins here into the left heart, and then pumped out through the aorta. Uh, that's why when I sample the arterial blood with an ABG in the radial artery, the partial pressure of oxygen is 100. Now let's see what happens if I were to put a hole in the wall of the heart that separates the two sides, or what we call a septal defect. Now you can imagine that deoxygenated blood is bypassing the lungs and mixing with arterial blood. So now imagine sampling the arterial blood. Of course you're going to get a lower PO2. So this is an example of what we call an extrapulmonary shunt. Now let's take another example. What were to happen if I were to fill up an entire lung with something like an ammonia? Now you have a whole lung that is being perfused, but is not being ventilated, meaning oxygen can't get through all of that pus into the blood. So while oxygenated blood will still come from the left lung, as you can see here, now we have deoxygenated blood coming from the right lung, leading to an intrapulmonary shunt. And here you can see that the ABG reflects that by showing the level of, uh, level of hypoxemia. So I hope this clears us up a bit and you know please feel free to leave us your comments or questions.